let's get started. Hello everyone. Uh, thanks a lot for having me. Uh, it's my first time here and I have to practice uh, for pronunciation. So thanks for having me in Wrocław. Yeah, Wrocław? Yeah. It's very hard. You, you have to. <laughs> Uh, so, uh, first, uh, some introduction. Uh, so, my name is Laurent Picard, uh, as you can hear, I'm French. Uh, I live in Paris. Um, I work uh, for Google. Uh, I joined uh, less than two years ago. Uh, I'm a developer advocate and I focus on the Google Cloud Platform. Um, before that, in previous life, uh, I co founded Booking and I was an ebook pioneer. So, I've been working in the ebook industry for 17 years before. So maybe you can guess, I've done a lot of embedded development, uh, but eventually I came to the cloud because uh, ebooks are a full ecosystem, right? So I made hardware, software, and a bit of cloud. And now I'm focusing on cloud. Um, but I'd like to know a bit more about you. So who is a developer in the audience? Uh. Yeah, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that's their face, not this face, right? <laughs> Cool. Uh, do we have a data scientist? I'm not. No data scientist? Yeah, we have one. So if I don't, can't answer, you will come on the stage, right? <laughs> um, and are some of you already using machine learning somehow? Yeah, a few of you. So maybe you will learn a bit more. And uh, do we have cloud users also somehow? Any cloud solutions? Okay, okay, okay. So I hope you will learn a lot. Uh, uh, so my goal today is to talk about machine learning uh, from the developer's point of view. So what can we do uh, with machine learning today, okay? Uh, so I'd like to start with this quote uh, from an author you might know. Um, when you first meet uh, something that is very advanced, it looks like magic, right? And that's the impression I had uh, with machine learning, maybe uh, what, you, what you had to. Uh, but there's no magic, it's just technology, right? Uh, so that's what I'm going to try uh, to show you today, uh, give you some insights about how it works. But first, what is a conference today? That's human learning, right? How does it work? Uh, you have a bunch of presentations, sometimes bullet points, and what you get from that is information, right? IDs, maybe. Okay. So machine learning is exactly the same. As an input, you have data data and you don't know how to sort it out, uh, and from that you will get information. You have input, data, and you extract information, insights, or sometimes you transform this data to get it information. Okay? So how basically does machine learning work? So first of all, the origin is uh, the experts have been trying to mimic the way we think our brain works and how we provide many examples as an input, so that's the data I've been talking about, and as a result, we, as a result, we manage to solve problems, okay? Even though we don't exactly know uh, how it works, uh, but it works. Um, the first step, most of the time, is tr training. We are building a model, so we provide samples, so for instance, if we, if we want to recognize cats and dogs, we provide many, many different samples, and we say, okay, this is a, da a cat, this is a dog, and it will uh, build a neural network with different layers. And once we have that, then we can propose a new picture, so here it's a dog, and it will activate the right connections, like we think it works in our brain, and it will give us uh, a number telling us, this is a cat or this is a dog. Just to give you an idea uh, how important it is at Google, this, these are the number of projects using uh, machine learning models uh, in our big repository. And as you can see, this is exponential. Okay, and, and you must use uh, one of these applications already, and machine learning are new features here and there in these applications. But as of today, we are developers. Uh, how can we benefit from machine learning. There are three ways. The legacy way, the historical way, it's hardcore machine learning, low level, for uh, data scientists, data engineers, they're new uh, jobs now. Uh, some uh, people I've met have been working in AI and maybe more specifically machine learning for 30 years or, but it's a field that existed 70 years ago, okay. 
So, but now we have the computing power to do something real, actual uh, with all these algorithms, these theories. Uh, it works today. But as a developer, uh, we can really benefit from it by integrating that in our solution with machine learning APIs. So that's the first uh, thing. Those are models that already exist that we can integrate and use right away. Uh, in a few hours, you can integrate that in your solutions. And the third way is AutoML. So this is pretty new and I will show you something. AutoML basically uh, uses the machine learning APIs and customizes them to your needs. But first, let's have, a, let's have a look at the machine learning APIs. So we call them building blocks because they are like Lego bricks, right? Building blocks. You can use them the way you want. They are uh, so ready to use uh, models. And there are six of them, really the low-level bricks today. Um, the input, so the data you provide, is pretty much anything. So it can be <coughs> text, image, video, uh, but also audio. And as a result, you either get information, or you can get translation, or text from the speech, or speech from the text. Okay. So um, I've chosen a few examples, and we're going to, to go through uh, these uh, samples. Okay. The first one, the Vision API, this is my favorite one. It's purely personal, uh, because when I was learning computing, uh, we were work working on image processing. We were trying to detect, detect edges and so on, so that was purely algorithmics. Uh, it worked somehow, but it had many limitations. Whenever we, we would present a new picture, it worked not that great. And machine learning is a solution. Machine learning as a way to learn differently uh, than an algorithm. So you can do many things. Um, I will show you a few examples. Um, one of them, for instance, is OCR. You can input a PDF and you will get, uh, or a scan of a picture, and you will get all the, the text blocks from that. But let's see uh, everything else. So I told you I live in Paris. So if I take a picture from Paris, basic one, uh, the API, so it's an API, right? So you do a web request, standard one, and you get a JSON uh, response. The JSON response here on the right tells you that this is Paris. Yeah, okay, that's right. You have an ID, so an identifier for Paris, and you also get the location. So, okay, but anyone here, if you've been to Paris, okay, you will tell, okay, this is Paris, no, no big deal. So I've taken a, a, a different picture with still an Eiffel Tower, but this is not Paris. And here the Vision API tells me uh, this is the Paris Hotel and Casino, and this is located in Las Vegas. So, so it was not fooled by this one. It also tells me where uh, I can find this picture on the web. Okay. okay, but even myself, I see that there's something wrong here. Yeah, there's a, an Eiffel Tower, but there's not these big lights uh, all around, so this is not Paris. So I took a different picture, uh, a close-up of this Eiffel Tower, and I tried to fool the system to see how a human, myself, and uh, the Vision API would react. So here, I cropped the picture, I zoomed in, I cropped it, I flipped it, I skewed it a little bit, and with that, uh, someone from Paris, in less than two seconds, would say, yeah, this is Paris, okay? Uh, but the Vision API is not full, okay? Uh, it still says, okay, this is the Paris Hotel and Casino. And so um, it took me some moment to think about it. Um, with machine learning, there's no, you know, interpretation. It's basic facts. And the only difference that a Parisian could tell is that there's something here that's not on the Eiffel Tower, but moreover, there's nothing below the Eiffel Tower. And if I don't look more than two seconds on this picture, I, I would be wrong. Okay, so this is to show you also the maybe uh, the, the way you can benefit from vision uh, analysis. Then um, all the other examples will be mostly based on Tolkien. That's the theme I chose. Um, so this is a picture from New Zealand. This is where the you know the Lord of the Rings movies have been shot, or most of the part anyway. Uh, so the Vision API will tell me, yeah, this picture is about nature, there's a tree, there's a uh, plant, a sky, and it's a photography, that's right. It will also tell me that there's a sign, so here. This sign is, okay, we can read it, but it's a 
it's a font that is not very legible, not very usual. So it tells me, yeah, this sign is in English, and it's written no admittance except on parties and so on. Uh, it, it's making a small mistake. You see, there should be a, a space between except and on, but this sign is very hard to read. Uh, we can read it, but actually there are many different stresses uh, over each vowel. So here maybe it's a difference where we're still better than this model. We can actually read and correct what we're reading. Here the model is making a small mistake. Okay. Uh, but anyway, we would have to understand that there are actually no stresses over these vowels. Then, if I take a picture of Gollum, uh, it's going to tell me, yeah, there's a face, so it's a 3D rendition, right? Uh, there's a face here, here are the eyes and everything, nose and mouth. But it's also able to tell me uh, the emotion of this face. And it's telling me that Gollum is angry, right? Like it, angry. Uh, and that's right, all Gollum is most of the time angry. Okay. Uh, so here uh, you get also the position in 3D of this face, um, and you can get a few sentiments. Uh, okay. So we'll try that a bit later. Then um, it's also able to tell me whether there's something famous in this picture. So I took uh, a, a pretty rare picture of Tolkien in a Spanish newspaper, um, but it's able to tell me that it's about uh, Tolkien. Um, and also, it's telling me where exactly the picture is coming from. It's not exactly the same picture, it's, it, uh, I cropped it, um, but it's been able to tell me. Uh, and likewise, I can get pages or images that are similar. So it will give me pictures of a man or woman in a forest or against a tree. So can be uh, used in some applications if you want, you want to have a visual universe uh, that looks similar. So I told you it's an API, so you can do directly uh, a web request, but we also provide open source client libraries, so I think you will find one of your preferred languages here. Uh, so I chose a Python example, so this is just to show you that in a few lines you can actually get uh, all the insights about, about uh, your uh, feature. So you just create a client, you provide uh, the input, so here the feature, then you call the feature you want, so here this is face detection, and then you have the results, and you can use them the way you want. Okay. So let's try something. So you can try everything in your browser if you go on cloudgoogle.com. Uh, so here, yeah, I took some. Why? Well, what? You know, you know these features. <laughs> so this is a picture I took last year in Krakow. Uh, I really like uh, this uh, sculpture. Um, so the Vision API is telling me this is the smoke bubbleski. So. Okay, uh, it's telling me the location, so I kind of recognize the castle here, so it, it seems to be right. Uh, it's telling me it's a sculpture, there's a tree, woody plant, uh, sky, rock, a monument. Yeah, that's right. And it's famous, <laughs> and it's actually the Vavil Dragon. <coughs> it's right. Yes, okay. Perfect. So, so interesting. So if I forgot about uh, what it was, I can actually exactly know what it is. So I've also got this picture uh, that I downloaded this morning. Uh, I have no idea. <laughs> so, so it's telling me there's a face. Yeah, that's right. Um, it's pretty neutral. Uh, not exactly a joy. Uh, maybe a, a hint of a, the start of a smile. Uh, the funny thing is, yeah, it's telling me uh, vision care maybe because of the glasses. Uh, it's a business person. Yeah, it's always telling me, telling me that whenever there's a man with a suit and a tie. Always a business person, and all politicians uh, look like polit uh, business persons uh, with the vision API anyway. Okay. Uh, and I don't know who this person is, and it's telling me this is uh, Mateusz Morawiecki. Is that Morawiecki? Uh, and apparently it's the prime, your prime minister. Is that, is that, is that correct? Yeah, okay, okay. So it works, okay? Um, but I could have been cheating, okay? I selected these features. Um, 
So let's uh, do a demo uh, with you, with everyone, okay? And so I invite you to connect, to get your smartphones connected. Um, I will give you uh, the, yeah, the URL, okay. So either you can uh, flash the QR code or you can enter the URL at the bottom, bit.ly slash demo. DF for DFest and PL for Demo DF PL. And I will do likewise, and you should reach out to this page. Is that correct? Yeah? Okay. So just, just wait a little. A uh, little while. Just I'm going to explain you uh, what I, I set up for this, for this demo. So, you're here, right? So I have a small Python backend, and what I did is I set up a few cloud buckets, so those are folders in the cloud. So photo captures, uh, analysis, composition, and faces. And I have cloud functions here, so I have a pipeline, and a cloud function will be triggered whenever there's a file in the bucket, okay? Uh, so the first thing, whenever there's a, a picture uploaded, it will call the analysis function. So it will call the vision API. And I, I will store the results here. Then I will do some composition between this and this. So I will produce a new picture. And whenever I have this, I will crop, I will take the largest face in this picture. So for instance, if you take a picture of two or three of, of you, I will take the largest face and then store the results here. And then we will have the result over there. Okay. Let me show you how it works first uh, with some samples. Yeah. Uh, or maybe tell you about the name of the demo. So this this, this demo is Tash Club. Okay. There are eight roles for Fight Club, but only one here. So if it's your first time at Stash Club, everyone has to get uh, a stash. Okay. Uh, so. So here is the first bucket. So first of all, I'm going to invite some guests who unfortunately couldn't come here, okay? So I'm uploading the pictures in this first bucket and it's going to trigger, you know, the different cloud functions. Um, and they should appear here. Oh, it's already worked. Okay, it's very fast. Uh, so apparently your prime minister changed something. Okay, so now let's do it uh, with your smartphone. So if you don't want your face to appear on the screen, uh, don't do it, but... Uh, okay, I go back, so let's go to step one. So if you refresh, it will ask you for a nickname. And then uh, ask you for camera authorization. And let's try a few faces, okay? Let's try to be, uh, I don't know, sad. Uh, uh, surprise, mm -hmm. um, sad, surprise, happy, or uh, angry. Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> so it works. Uh, and I have to admit, I look like my father. <laughs> Who has a mustache? Uh, let's try something else. Uh, so I don't know if I look angry or not. So you, if you go back, you can try a few, a few pictures. Okay. And I will be happy. Yeah. Okay. So let's see what we have and if you participated. Who is in green? So we only have Papa Ryan. Okay. So everybody is happy here? Who's been sad? Nobody. Who's been surprised? Ah, a few of us. And by the way, so I, as a guest, I had a, a, a zombie picture from uh, the movie with the Brad Pitt. And this picture has been recognized as violent, and whenever there's something violent, so uh, I blur the picture. So this is, so you, you see the result here. Here is the original. Okay. Uh, so can be useful if you want to sort out uh, violent or medical content, something you don't want to show to kids or something you are not sure. Uh, okay. Um, so this is surprise, and let's see happiness. Yeah, everybody's happy. <laughs> okay, so you see, it's uh, pretty easy. Just a few, a few lines. Uh, 
and you can do more, of course, you can get, uh, you can know what the, the pictures are talking about. Um, the next API, the Video Intelligence API. So it's basically the same, but you have another dimension, you have time, okay? So this API is going to be, to provide you insight about the videos, but also it's going to tell you the different sequences in, in this video. Um, okay, so let me show you an example. So this is a video that has been processed by the Video Intelligence API. And, uh, okay, so for instance, here I have a sequence. There's a spiral galaxy. The world is made with tiny bits. That's right. If I go further, there's a human here. Yeah, it works. And a bit further, a polar bear. You will fix something. Yeah. Or can so it means you can automatically index your whole corpus of videos. Then uh, APIs uh, <coughs> about, te about text. So the natural language API. So I took a, a sentence from Wikipedia describing who is talking. Okay. So I took this sentence. Um, and the natural language API is going to tell me first this is an English sentence. And then provide me all the relationships and all the types about every item in this sentence. Even the punctu punctuation. Uh, one cool thing that could be useful is also I get the lemmas, so in purple here, so I know uh, all the verbs uh, in a canonical form, uh, the plurals, feminine, masculine, and so on. So can be useful if you want to work uh, in a centralized way. Okay. But likewise, like for uh, the pictures, it's able to recognize entities. Uh, so with the same sentence, it's going to give me three different groups of entities. Uh, the first one are the pers are persons, so Tolkien is a person. Um, it gives me a link to his Wikipedia page, but also it gives me an ID. You saw, you see the, the ID identifier, and this is the same ID when I input uh, a picture of Tolkien, right? So I know exactly that we are talking about the same person that I saw in the picture and that we're talking about in this sentence. So it can be useful too. Uh, British, so is related to the United Kingdom, and likewise the three books are recognized as works of art, each one with, with its own eye. Okay, and like for pictures, it's able to recognize sentiments. So I took two different reviews of The Hobbit, uh, an original one from the New, York, the New York Times back in the day, so previous century, and a negative one for, from Goodreads, it's a social uh, network for book lovers. And each sentence is going to be rated uh, from min minus one to plus one, plus one being uh, very positive, of course. And here it works. So the three sentences at the top are, are actually um, sentences from the New York Times uh, article, and at the bottom they come from Pauline's review. Uh, she didn't like the book at all. Okay. So can be useful uh, to know the, the sentiments in the text you're processing. And likewise, it's able to classify the, the content. So this sentence here uh, is classified as books and literature. And I'm pretty sure about it, 97%. Uh, so likewise, uh, back uh, with this Python uh, code sample, you create the client, you provide the content, you uh, call the feature, analyze sentiment, and then you can know. Uh, the whole text, if it's positive, negative, neutral, or and each sentence, is, each uh, sentence too. Okay. So, for instance, uh, this uh, API is used uh, by Ocado. It's a British company. Uh, it's a retailer, and they are processing uh, their customer emails through that. And whenever it's a, to give you the basic picture, they are doing many many <coughs> things, and they also have data scientists. But they're using this model uh, to detect uh, negative uh, feedback and they treat that in priority. And likewise, on text, so the translation API, you have all used it, I guess. Nobody <laughs> here has not used it, so it's basically Google Translate. Uh, so it can translate from and to uh, over 100 different languages, so that's thousands of different combinations. And uh, the, the interesting thing is, a couple of years ago, I, I was not part of Google, but as a simple user, I noticed that there was a, a, a big change in the translation, especially in French. 
uh, the translation got a lot better from one day to the other one. Uh, and I got the explanation uh, when, when joining Google. It's actually that uh, translation API or Google Translate switched from a mostly statistical model to a purely machine learning model. And that's when uh, we got the big jump in quality. Okay. Uh, so it's not human quality yet, uh, but it's a lot better and it keeps improving because we can uh, provide uh, more samples. Uh, uh, for instance, when you have a translation, you can improve the translation. You can say, okay, this is not what I was expecting. Okay, so likewise here, it's even simpler. There, there's more con uh, there are more co comments than code. Uh, you create a client, you call translate with your input, and you get uh, the, the, the translation. Uh, as an example, Airbnb, 60% uh, of their users do not talk the same language. So it's a bit hard to connect, right? Uh, so they are basically translating everything, all the listing, and everyone, everything. Uh, and that way, these users can uh, communicate or understand what the other one is proposing. Um, let's do a live demo. Okay. Uh, we will go on. Yeah, sorry. So here, it's the same demo, but I added uh, two, um, two calls from the back end. So first, I'm using the translation API. So if anything is not in English, I will translate it to English. I don't have to, but here, for everyone to understand, I changed that to English. Uh, and then I will launch a natural uh, language um, analysis on that and try to provide uh, more, um, more insights about what we're saying. So I go back to, to my demo. Um, I'm going to show you yeah, a few samples yeah, to go faster so I don't type them. So yeah, I really love raspberries. So in English, I hate uh, watermelons in French here. So I love uh, raspberries in Spanish. And here, this is Chinese that I don't speak and Japanese. Okay. And so here are the feedbacks. So whenever it's not English, it's going to be translated here. So you have the translation from Chinese and Japanese. <laughs> uh, it gives you the entities. So I've been talking twice about raspberries, twice about watermelons. Okay, so no big deal here. And here are the sentiments. Yeah, I love raspberries. Raspberries, raspberries are top. Uh, and I hate them. So, but let's try that yourself. So if you go back to the application, I move to step two. So, so you go next, and you can tell me anything. And we'll try to, yeah, to analyze that. So I'm going to uh, to say something. Uh, um, in French. I don't know how to spell it in French. <coughs> so, we've been typing a few comments. So, let's see. Yeah, so we have some Russian, some Polish. Catch the feed. <laughs> okay, Polish, Czech, English. No, that's nothing. Uh, oh, Ukrainian. Okay. Uh, Polish, Ukrainian, Polish. <laughs> so a few personal messages maybe. Uh, German and Polish. Okay. So let's see. So you see, in a few seconds, I can know that someone has been uh, talking about France. Morocco, that's myself, so I, I, I misspelled it. Uh, pancakes, so maybe someone is angry. Uh, oh, so I don't know about this one. <laughs> okay, so you've been talking, uh, let's recheck, about nine persons, okay. And let's check the sentiments. Okay, you love chocolate croissant. Uh, it's actually called uh, pain au chocolat. <laughs> uh, Okay, yeah, so, so I guess I will have the link, maybe, I don't know, but this place, uh, mountains, raspberries, okay, very positive, uh, which is wonderful. Uh, so this has not been translated, is it uh, Polish or is it something else? Yes. <laughs> no? Okay, 
Okay, so you, okay, Johnny, you've been talking about France, and uh, okay. and any negative I could not bring that one yesterday. So myself with Western experience. Okay, uh, so you're pretty positive. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so let's go on. Uh, likewise, um, we can process speech in both ways. So first of all, speech to text. So you provide audio and you, you get the, the text uh, trans, uh, transcription. Uh, you, uh, so it works, it's a building block for any uh, chatbot, any assistant, right? Uh, and you also can know exactly uh, timestamps, so the locations of all the words in your uh, audio stream. Uh, Azure, so like Airbnb, they are connecting people from all over the world. Uh, it's a matchmaking app, so they are using the translation API, but also the speech-to-text uh, upfront to, to transcribe uh, speech-to-text. Okay. Um, so, I should just show you, and I will take a big risk because I don't know if it's going to work. i uh, show you an example. It's uh, integrated in Chrome. Uh, so, I will, I will try to pronounce... Uh, <laughs> Your wonderful city name. What is the temperature? Okay, sorry. What is the temperature in Warsaw? <laughs> it's two degrees in Oslo right now. <laughs> so I don't know if it's the model or myself. So I will retry. What is the temperature in Paris? Yeah. It's eleven degrees in Paris right now. Okay, so so that's a building block for for chatbots and and likewise you have the opposite. Uh, text-to-speech. So, text-to-speech is not new. Um, I've been using text-to-speech in 1999 in the first Apple device I made. Uh, uh, we wanted the text to be read aloud, right? So, it worked perfectly. Uh, you could say, okay, read me this book, and it would synchronize everything. Each word would be highlighted, and it would read uh, the text aloud. But nobody used it. It was perfect, technically perfect, but nobody used it because it was like a robot talking to you, right? So I was very proud of the challenge, but it, it was useless. Uh, as of today, uh, we have, so this is new at Google for, for one year now, uh, we have the WaveNet technology. So it has been developed um, by the London team, uh, the DeepMind team, you may know them for other uh, challenges. Uh, and with a machine learning model, or a very elaborate uh, successions of uh, models, they've been able to generate uh, speech from text, and that's it. Of course, with a, a lot of training uh, from re recorded voices, and the other challenge is that they managed to generate 20 seconds of speech in only one second. So this is why we can use what, what you've seen here, we can use uh, chatbots in real time. Okay. Just to give you this example, uh, because uh, with my teammates, we've been playing around. Uh, we have uh, a lot of samples where we have the original voice and we have the WaveNet result. And we've been trying to say, okay, which is the original one and which, which is the WaveNet one? So, She earned a doctorate in sociology at Columbia University. She earned a doctorate in sociology at Columbia University. So who thinks uh, the last one is WaveNet? Okay, so we are wrong. Uh, the, the WaveNet one is actually the first one. Uh, and when you reach that level, it means that we are almost at human quality. It's very hard to tell the difference. And the good thing is that uh, it's able to mimic really the way, the way we speak, uh, with poses, with intonations and everything. So it's maybe the most advanced machine learning uh, model we have. My favorite one is the Vision API, but this one is, is really groundbreaking. Okay, let's go next. So we've seen how to use, how we can use building blocks. So to integrate them or in our solutions, sometimes in a pipeline or anything. But sometimes it's very generic and it will not um, fit your own needs, right? And this is where Cloud AutoML uh, works. So Cloud AutoML, you can remember that as learning to learn. So it's a new technique where you provide uh, samples, you don't have to be a data scientist. You provide samples, AutoML will automatically train a model, deploy it, 
and serve it. And then you will have your own API with your data, customize your, your, with your data. It's your own API that is working in your use case. Okay. Uh, as of today, uh, there are three uh, cloud AutoML solutions. Uh, one for Vision, so derived from Vision API. One uh, called Natural Language 2 and Translation. And from that, you will get custom classifications or even custom translation. So, for your understanding, if I take these two pictures uh, and input them to the Vision API, I will get pretty much the same results. It's basically clouds in the sky, okay? But what if I want to know exactly the kind of cloud it is? So I would like to get Cyrus and Altocomos. So here, I can customize uh, the Vision API model. And so this, this demo has been made uh, by Sarah Robinson, uh, a teammate of mine uh, based in New York. Uh, so she took um, less than 2,000 samples and she created five labels and she labeled each picture, right? So a couple of hundreds per label. And that way, uh, then you can launch the training with AutoML. You can launch a first training for one hour. It will give you some results, right? Uh, with a precision of about 85%. If you are happy with the results, then you can launch a, a longer training. So here it's three hours and the precision uh, bumps up to 92%. Okay. Uh, so once you have uh, this model, then you have to evaluate whether you're happy with the results or not. So I will go quickly here, uh, but to evaluate your model, you have to compare the results you have and the expectations you have. Okay. So let's imagine uh, that this is all the different uh, possible results. On one side, you have the model results, the results that are detected by the model, and on another side, you have the results that you expect. And that's actually four different uh, cases. So, just for you, you've heard uh, these terms maybe, but maybe to provide you with the logic, um, the results that are detected by the model are called positives, and the ones that are not detected are called negatives. And if that's what you expect, then it's called true positive. If it's not false positive. And if uh, it's not detected, so they are negatives, but they are actually false because they should have been detected. And the rest is actually the true negatives, okay? So in a model, what we want to minimize is actually the false positives and the false negatives, right? Ideally, they should be zero, but it's impossible, even us humans, we do mistakes, right? We have sometimes false positives and sometimes false negatives. So there are two metrics used to evaluate a model. The first one is called the precision. Uh, maybe you just uh, have to, it gives you a measure of the quality of your model. So this is when you want to minimize the false positives. And the other one is called the recall. So it's a little bit barbaric, I think. Maybe they should have chosen a better name. But the recall is the opposite, uh, is a measure of the, co the quantity uh, of the samples that will be detected. Okay? And you can play in between the two, uh, with the two metrics, you can place the cursor where you want, if you want a lot of quality or if you want uh, more, more results. It depends on your use case. Another data visualization uh, tool that, that can be useful um, is the confusion matrix. So for instance, here, um, we know that we are very good at detecting cumulonimbuses, right? But we are very bad at detected alto surfaces. Uh, so it means that we have to look at the samples of alto surfaces that we provided. Maybe we didn't provide enough samples, or maybe we provided bad quality. They all, they all look the same, right? So this is where, with this uh, information, you can improve the samples and launch the training again. Okay. And when it's done, so I used the Sarah's demo, and this is a picture I took last year in Krakow too. And so I changed nothing, I input the picture, and it's telling me 98% uh, sure it's a cumulus. Okay. So it's very basic, but you see, with, um, you can 
quickly do something very useful, of course, if you want very high quality, maybe you will invest more time in uh, selecting and, and making samples, but then you have your own API and you can use it the way uh, uh, I used that in my demo before. Okay. For your understanding, there are three techniques uh, under the hood. One is called transfer learning, so this is the technique where we take an existing model and we add new layers to customize that, to learn new features, okay? But we are reusing what is already known. So this is also the way we learn. I know something, but when someone, someone learns, teaches me something, I can relate to what I know and then add new connections. Uh, a technique proper to Google, so this is where we're using our TPUs, a lot of processing power. We are able to uh, choose the, the optimal uh, architecture for the model. So this is using a lot of computing power. And last, this is a technique known to, to the experts, uh, hyperparameter tuning. So there are some settings that humans, so that, that are not related to the training, but that data scientists tune to improve the model, or the results, not the model, the results. And here we have an algorithm to automatically uh, improve that, and we are already doing better than yours. So it's been used um, on a few, by a few companies already. Uh, one of them, ZSL, uh, so it's a, a company from London. I talked to the company who did the solution uh, two weeks ago. Um, if you check my Twitter account, you will see a few links if you're interested. So they take pictures uh, all over the world of animals with cameras that are hidden. Uh, and with the uh, customized uh, vision uh, model, they are able to recognize all the different species. Not just, oh, there's a lion, there's a monkey. They know the exact species, thanks to that. Okay. And the third part, where I'm lost, and I don't want to go there for the time being, uh, for more machine learning. So here, uh, we have one person here who knows that. Uh, TensorFlow, so if you want to build your own neural networks, uh, design them and train them yourself, you can do that on your laptop, actually. You can download TensorFlow, it's an open source library. It's in Python, but it's also available in JavaScript today. Uh, and then you can build everything yourself. It will take a bit more time to, to, get, uh, to get introduced to, to, to the machine learning concept and everything. Uh, but then you can do uh, whatever you want, it's up to your imagination, right? And we already see some flabbergasting results uh, from any developer in the world. Okay, TensorFlow, just for, your, um, uh, for you to remember, is the most popular machine learning repo on GitHub, uh, by far. So, time to wrap up. So, we've seen how we can use building blocks, right? Existing models. You can try each of them on your browser if you want to have an idea how it works with your own data. With AutoML, which is a new technique, then you can customize that. It's just the beginning. So it's in beta right now, and a few months ago there was only one of them. We have three of them today. And last, if you want to get deeper into that, you can do uh, uh, TensorFlow training. You can check out TensorFlow. Uh, and there are many, many talks about TensorFlow and it will be, will be worth a couple of days of training, okay? So I hope you learned a lot today. Uh, ideally, maybe give you some ideas. Uh, feel free to, to provide uh, me some feedback. Uh, and thank you a lot for having me today and have a nice evening. Thank you. <laughs> and if you have questions, any question? All the people are shy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, first question. <laughs> this, yeah, yeah, over there on the right. Well, a great presentation, uh, and I have a question about auto ML. I would like to ask if there's some way to look inside the model and how it makes decision and classify the images. 
uh, for, for the time being, uh, you can import a data set, export data set, but we don't pro provide insights about the model, so this is just the beginning. I don't know how it's going to evolve, but yeah, more, you know, there's a big ecosystem being built. There's a TensorFlow, there's Keras, there are sci uh, SciKit, there are many different frameworks uh, sometimes working all together. So I guess at some point there will be some export, um, maybe a standard about uh, there's a, you can, or in some cases, with TensorFlow, you can import and export models. Uh, here, I'm not sure uh, with the ML, uh, or, but it, it will probably evolve a lot uh, during the next months. So, I'm not sure about the answer as of today. Yeah. Okay, thank you. But if it makes sense for your business, then the feature will be there. Yeah, yeah I was uh, more curious about just validating that you are providing valid data sets. Like, there are some cases, like, for example, People were classifying if there's a window in the picture, and it seems that uh, guys provided uh, too much photos where there was a bed under the window, and the model trained itself so when there was a bed in yeah. the picture, it classified the window. Yeah, pro actually, working with the samples is an art when you want to reach, uh, let's say, 99% of uh, accuracy. For, for the uh, Zoological uh, Society of London, ZSL, they reached today 97% of accuracy, which is amazing. But uh, they've been working for years with manually labeling uh, every picture. So uh, yeah, and, and sometimes you have to focus on, on what, you know, for, for the faces here, uh, if I want to customize uh, something about the faces, then of course I would first recognize the faces and I would focus on the face. Because uh, yeah, the, the model will be better if it's not learning about uh, what's around. But I would need to provide very, very different pictures, not only on white background, uh, maybe in the night, and of course, uh, if I don't want the model to be biased, uh, I would need to provide uh, pictures with many different people uh, from the, the many different uh, races and genders. Okay. Uh, and that's the big issue today. Uh, most of the time, we introduce our own biases uh, into the models and into the samples, because we don't think about all the different uh, use cases. Or in cases. Okay, thank you. So it's time, so yeah, so have a great evening, thank you.